So we watched the video on the moon, and even though the Earth has an atmosphere, we're not going to take air resistance into consideration. So all freely falling objects are close to the surface of the Earth, gain speed towards the Earth at the same rate. So that rate, again, is the acceleration due to gravity, and we're going to disregard um, any of the friction in the atmosphere. All right, so we call these types of problems free fall. So free fall, motion under the influence of the gravitational force. So again, no air resistance. So the bottom line is all freely falling objects accelerate at the same rate. And again, that rate is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared when we use our same Cartesian sign convention up and to the right is positive. Now, how does that affect what we're going to be doing? Well, thus far, we've learned three equations. So we learned the equation that VF is equal to VI plus AT. So everywhere where there's a, there was an A in an equation, we change it to a G. So this becomes VS is equal to VI plus GT. This becomes VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2GX and what you can do is, because when we, you don't have to do this, but because we call this X and Y, if you want, you can call this Y because it's vertical. And you can say Y is equal to VIT plus one-half GT squared because we're going to be talking about things going up and down. Okay? So all you do is every A is a G. Now, there's different types of problems. In these types of problems, the most in important thing is your sign convention. So your sign convention is always going to be like the origin of a graph, and it's going to be where motion begins. So let's look at dropping an object, okay? So what I always do is I draw a picture, because the drawing the picture helps me to conceptualize what's going on. So it says a student stands on the top of the science wing 7 building, which is 25 meters high. She drops her physics book. A, what is its speed just before it hits the ground? And then B, how long does Dr. Solomon have to get out of the way without being hit? So, again, when I draw my picture, this, where the student is standing, is where motion begins. So that's my frame of reference. Now, here, when I measured the building from here, because I'm measuring from here down, I'm going to say that the height of the building is going to be negative 25. Now, there's no other numbers in this problem. How am I going to do this problem? Because all our equations have four variables, and I need to know three to find a fourth. But I only have one variable there. What am I going to do? Well, when I drop something... I know that my initial velocity, vi, is zero. Whenever something's traveling through the air, I also know that g is 9.8 meters per second squared. What do you see there now? Do I have three things? Yeah. So I have y, I have vi, I have g, and I want to find vf. So again, this is just showing you, so when I do my problem, I write my given, VI is 0, G is negative 9.8, Y is negative 25. And now I'm going to say which equation has those four variables. So I have VI, I have G, I have Y, and I want to find VF. So this is the equation VF squared is equal to VI squared, and it used to be plus 2AX, but remember the A becomes a G, and then you can call, instead of it X, you can call it Y because it's vertical. So what I'm going to do is, since the initial velocity is zero, I can make it disappear. So I, uh, VF squared is equal to 2GY. I'm going to rearrange the equation to solve for the unknown in terms of the known and substitute and solve. So it's just like we did before. For part B, it says, how long does Dr. Solomon have? So now I want to find T. So again, I'll look at what I have. I have VI. I have G. I have Y. I just found VF, and I want to find T. So I can use this equation. Before, it was X is equal to VIT plus one-half AT squared. But now it's going to change to 
y is equal to bit plus one-half gt squared. Because it's zero, this whole term goes to zero. So y is one-half gt squared. I rearrange the equation, and I solve for t. Now let me show you where people make their biggest mistakes. Can I have a negative under a radical? No. So you have to be consistent with your sign convention. Remember, for my frame of reference, the how high the building is, that's negative, and gravity is negative. So the negative in the numerator cancels with the negative in the denominator, and then I don't have a negative underneath the radical. Okay. Now let's look at a different scenario. The next scenario is throwing something up in the air. So again, we have to start off with our frame of reference. So let's say now, here's the ground. I'm throwing something up in the air. So when I throw it up, my initial velocity is going to be a maximum. We know gravity is constantly pulling it down. And when it reaches its maximum height, the final velocity is zero. And I know g is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So a student throws a skittle vertically upward with an initial velocity of 15. So that's vi. How high will it go? So again, you're reading this problem and you're like, how am I going to do this? I only know one thing. I need to know three to solve a problem. Well, you know the final velocity is zero. And you know that g is negative 9.8. So again, this is my frame of reference where motion begins. So how do I solve this? I have the i, I have the f, I have g, and I want to solve y. Which equation has these four variables? The f squared is equal to vi squared plus 2gy. I rearrange the equation to solve for the unknown in terms of the known. And then I solve for y. And again, here's where you're going to make your mistake is that when I rearrange this equation, a lot of times people make mistakes from going from here to here. And it's just algebra. When I rearrange this, it's vf squared minus vi squared. So then, because vf is zero, you don't want to forget this minus sign. So this minus sign here is going to cancel with this minus sign here because y is going up and y has to be positive. Okay? So this is one of the things you don't want to forget about that. So I solve for y. And this should come out to be positive because it's going up. Then when it says how long will it take, again, I write down my four values. Vf is equal to vi plus gt. I rearrange the equation to solve for the unknown in terms of the known. And I solve for t. And again, I have to be consistent with my sign convention. Can I get a negative value for time? No, we don't know how to go backwards in time. So time always has to be positive. So if you don't get a positive value for time, then you know you made a mistake. So you need to be consistent, okay, and look at all that. So we're using the same equations we used before. The difference is the A's become G, so we always are going to know G when something's going through the air. The thing you have to remember is when I drop something, the initial velocity might be zero. When I throw something up in the air, when it reaches its maximum height, the velocity is zero. Unless they give me other information. That now when we get to little comp problems a little bit different, they might have you throw something down. So they might give you an initial speed if you're throwing something down. Or they might ask you to find how high it goes after a certain amount of time. So the problems are going to vary. But this is the basics for these types of problems.